and welcome to another Daddy James Films Webs.com video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to install Windows XP Part 1. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to install Windows XP. Uh, what you're going to need is a computer with at least 256 megabytes of RAM and 4 gigabytes of hard drive space. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do right now is turn on the system and then I'm going to configure it to boot off the CD-ROM drive. You also need a, a Windows CD install disk to do this with. Now during the boot process I will be pressing escape. Now depending on your motherboard bias you may and may not have this option. Now make sure when it first comes on that you hurry up and press escape because if you don't it won't give that option again and it'll end up booting uh, directly to uh, Windows. So in this case, what you need to do is just uh, restart the computer, try it again. Now make sure when it first boots up that you hit escape. Some, some computers don't let you press escape and go directly to the boot menu. And then from the boot menu, you would choose the CD-ROM drive. Um, that just depends on the motherboard manufacturer. Um, so in this case, what you need to do, you need to go into the CMOS setup. To do this, you need to restart your computer again. Um, and when you do that, uh, your computer will pretty much give you a direction on how to get to the CMOS setup utility. Um, <clears throat> and you probably, in my case, I had to press F2 to get to it. Uh, yours might be something different, like F10 or something like that. The way your CMOS setting will probably be uh, different from the way mine looks. Every buyer's manufacturer has and it has their own CMOS setup program and have different versions of their own CMOS setup uh, program. So the location of this particular item that we're going to right now may be completely different in yours. For us, we need to come over here to the boot menu. Now notice down here we have several options for specifying the boot order. We want the system to boot off the CD-ROM drive first. So I come down and select the CD-ROM drive which is set now to third in the order. The way the screen works is that the device listed, the first device listed in the list will be the first device the system will try to boot from. If it doesn't find anything there, it would then boot from the next device. And then it doesn't, if it doesn't find any system, uh, system devices there, it will try for the next one. And so on until it finds uh, the system device. Now in this case we wanted to boot off the CD-ROM drive first. Now, using the plus or minus sign, according to the uh, directions right there on the uh, right side of the screen, to change the location of a particular option in the boot menu. Okay, down there at the bottom of the screen, it said press F10 to, uh, to save and exit the, the system. And that's what I just did, and now it's uh, getting ready to save and exit. Alright. Now we're, we're boot off the CD-ROM drive. Now depending on the type of hard disk controller you have installed in the system, you may need to press F6 there at the very beginning and load a device driver uh, from a uh, floppy disk to allow, allow Windows to act, <coughs> access your hard disk drive with a very, uh, basic, at a, at a very basic level. If you're using an IDE hard disk controller, you don't have to worry about it. It's not a problem because Windows have built-in IDE support, uh, it will be able to access your IDE hard drives without a problem. Now if you use most common SCSI board, you probably won't need to load a driver either. Likewise, Windows XP has device drive built in that will activate most SCSI drives. Now there are some SCSI drivers that you will have to load as a driver for. In addition, if you're using a RAID board, either IDE or SCSI, you will need to press F6 at the very beginning, then insert a floppy disk with the driver on it that will allow Windows XP installation routine to, ac to, uh, to access the hard disk drive. Notice also right after that we will give it the option to press F2 if we want us to start an automated uh, system recovery. Now in the welcome screen we have a few different options. If we want to install Windows XP we will uh, go ahead and uh, press enter. Now if we want to start the recovery uh, console, uh, we will press R. Or if we want to quit, we can just press F3. But what we're going to do today, I went ahead and I press enter. Now what you see here is the end user license agreement. Um, 
basically what you're going to do is uh, you're going to scroll all the way down and press F8 if that's what it is asking you to do uh, to agree to it. Okay, now that we uh, press F8 to agree to it, um, it will take us to this screen right here and now we got to pick uh, uh, what portion we want to add our Windows XP on. Now we have a few options here. Now if we have multiple hard disk drives, we can uh, pick which uh, hard disk drive we can install it on. If we have multiple partitions, we can pick which partition we'd like to install it on. In this tutorial, uh, there's uh, only one partition, which is the actual disk here. Okay, right here, you have a few different options right here. You can press enter to uh, select uh, this right here, this partition right here, uh, or to create a partition, you can uh, a space, you can press C, and to delete a partition, you can press D. Now, if you have more than one disk drive, let's say you have another operating system on another disk, you need to be careful about deleting a, a partition, because, you know, if you delete it, you end up losing that, whatever you got in that space. So, if you don't want to delete that partition, don't delete it. Um, Right now it's just a raw petition. It hadn't been formatted into any file system or anything like that yet. Now we can select that as the lo uh, new location that we want to install Windows XP in. Okay, now we need to pick which type of file system we want to implement on that um, partition. Now the best one to use uh, for this uh, format is uh, NTFS. I'd rather use NTFS than FAT. Uh, NTFS is the best one to use. And I'm going to do uh, uh, the longer one, not the quick one. Now we wait while it's uh, been uh, partitioned here. Um, this is going to go through pretty quickly because I'll be pausing the video as it's doing. It. Now, uh, if you depending on what size your hard drive is, is the is how long it's going to take. Sometimes it can take a long time. Sometimes not. Uh, the bigger your hard drive is, the longer it's going to take. Uh, on this one right here, I believe only, I only have like a four gigabyte hard drive, so this will go pretty quickly. Uh, now, if you have something like a hard uh, 100 gigabytes or something like that, it's going to take a lot longer to do. Okay, at this point, the installation program is going to copy all the Windows setup files over to to the new partition which we are installing Windows XP on, and this might take a few minutes to do again, depending on what size your hard drive is. I'm sorry, it depends on the speed of your CD-ROM and the speed of your um, on your uh, hard drive disk. At this point, your computer is going to reboot. Okay, and when it uh, reboots, you're going to see that we're going to be in a graphical environment instead of a text-based environment. Okay, at this point, Windows XP is now installing uh, Windows on, its, uh, on the system. Now, on the left here, you're going to see a series of buttons that that details where in the installation process we are. Um, okay, right now, we've already collected information, dynamic uh, updating the system, and preparing installation. 